Sorry about that. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Sheen and I usually talk about a lot more interesting things, but today I thought I will do a little life catch up, a bit of a q and A. I I have put a story on my Instagram previously and a lot of you have sent in questions. Thank you for that. So I have all of the questions lined up here. So let's get into it. I'm just gonna pick some of them and answer them to try and give you a brief overview of where we're at with the channel and in life in general. So let's get into it. <sighs> of course, the first question is, when are you meeting Elizabeth? Um, we have some plans, hopefully in March, um, we might be going on holiday. So let's see if that happens. From, oh, thank you. From Canice in Wonderland, how are you so funny? Honestly, I am glad you appreciate this because other than myself, no one finds me funny. So I'm glad there's someone else who finds me funny. I think generally it's, I was born with it. <laughs> Um, why do you and Elizabeth not get married? Unfortunately, it's not allowed. Otherwise, we would be by now. Um, okay, questions from Elizabeth. Uh, what is your love language asking for a friend? So um, this has changed over time, but mostly I think I, I get into a few of them, but what really speaks to me is um, physical touch, I think is what it's called. So I love it. I love hugs. I love cuddles. I love holding hands with people that I love. So I think this really means a lot to me and this is what I love receiving right this is love language yeah and um I also don't like big gestures but I like very nice small actions that people do like I don't know um remembering that this day is important for me and therefore sending a text or um just remembering something that I like and sending that to me all of these make me feel very special and valued and I really like that um but when it comes to I think that's what love language is right it's what speaks to you well if I'm wrong I apologize What's my hair care routine? Oh, I have a video on this. It was for my curly hair, which I've stopped taking care of. It, it's too much hassle, guys, I'm sorry. It's just too much hassle to maintain the curly hair and it doesn't look good most of the days. So I've, I've reverted to my old ways with my Dyson. Um, of course, there's another video for that. But in terms of how I wash my hair and stuff, I have a video for that. Hopefully I, I can put the link here somewhere. Tips for maintaining a long distance friendship. Um, that's a very good question. I think it really varies on the relationship and the other person as well. So what your dynamic is like, um, because I have a lot of friends who I'm having to maintain a long distance relationship with. And I found that, for example, with Elizabeth, she's someone that I speak to every day. And this is what works for both of us. And we, we are that constant presence in each other's life, which is great. Um, but I have other friends who... I'm very close to, but our dynamic is different in the sense that we will probably have a five hours long phone call once a month and that's it. We don't text each other. We don't send memes to each other. And that's because of how busy her schedule is. And I'm completely fine with our relationship being that way. So I think the main thing is that you both care about each other and you make the other person feel like you still care and you're making a special effort to keep that person in your life and to communicate with them in the way that they want to be communicated to and I think that's very important so having clear communication in terms of what do you expect from the relationship is important and also bringing to the table what can I provide and how much can I provide in this relationship is also very key. Is it true about not paying tax in Dubai? Yes, there is no income tax in Dubai, which is great. <laughs> what about healthcare? Um, healthcare, you need to have insurance here. It's a bit like in America. So healthcare is not free as far as I know. So you need to have an insurance in order to um, cover all of your expenses. Worst thing about the UAE so far, I have to say when I moved here, it was peak summertime and I really struggle with the heat. And the fact that you cannot walk anywhere also was a big problem for me because um, especially in Cambridge, I used to walk everywhere. I don't know how to ride a bike, so I never had a bike. I would literally walk everywhere <laughs> unless it was more than an hour than I would take a bus. So I do miss my little walking trips. And now that it is less hot, I tend to go for walks at night, but you can't walk to places in Dubai because there is a massive motorway of like eight lanes that you are not allowed to cross. So it takes you 
it always cracked me up when I just moved here when you look at Google Map between one location to the next it can be literally six minutes drive but it's an hour and a half walk because you have to go on such a long detour in order to cross so that that was something oh this is from my old neighbor from cambridge did you move to dubai with a goal in mind dubai looks better on you oh thank you so much soraya um yeah so i moved to dubai because i thought that it was time for me to move from the UK. Um, I really needed more sun in my life, but career-wise, I can't really move back to Mauritius. There is not much for me there. Um, at the moment, I don't know what kind of job I would be doing in Mauritius. So um, therefore I was looking for something else and Dubai came up, especially in terms of consulting. It is um, a lot of people make that move from London. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a go. But in terms of intentions with Dubai, it was, um, let's try it out. It's a country full of expats. I know a lot of friends here. I have family here and just to see um, whether it's somewhere that could be potentially a um, long-term thing. And also, you know, with content creation and um, YouTube and all of that, I thought it would give a lot of content ideas. So that's why we came here. Let's see how it goes. Who is the ideal Mr. Sheen? Vol, okay. I get this Mr. Sheen joke a lot. Um, if you don't know, <laughs> Mr. Sheen is a cleaning thing. I'm sure we can have the picture here somewhere, but um, I'm guessing what is meant here is who is the ideal man for me? That's a very good question. I've been thinking about this a lot recently, and I think there are a few important things, right? Let's get into this. There are a few things that are important, um, and there's also just the basics, right? Um, when it comes to, I don't know, age, it comes to um, education, it comes to compatibility in terms of intellectual levels, like all of this is is given, right? You need to have a basic level of compatibility. But then in terms of everything else, I think what's very important is emotional intelligence. Um, in the past few years, I've realized how key it is um, to have emotional intelligence in order to understand yourself so that you can understand other people in a relationship and that is so important and i will definitely put a big um number one for that this is really key and i think the second thing is um humor i am very funny <laughs> but i also want the other person to be funny because if you can't laugh at things that life throw at you it can drag you down a lot and i think being able to this is one thing that I have in common with each of my friends is that we just find each other really funny, even though objectively we're probably or not. But we do spend so much time laughing and this is very good because firstly, distresses you. And secondly, it just really helps you to keep a positive outlook on life and helps you have fun. So um, that's also very important. And um, thirdly, um, obviously looks, I think, so this is a very... Um, touchy subject when it comes to look, right? We all, there there are two school of thoughts. One school of thought is that, oh, you know, we all pretend like we don't care about looks, but we all care about looks and we all want our partner to have the best looks in the world. Um, and there's the other one, which is, oh, we don't care about looks at all. And I, I don't agree with either of them. I think that, yes, there is a level of attraction that needs to be there. And that level of attraction is something that we can't necessarily control. But here we're talking about, you know, the first interaction that you, you have with a person. And it doesn't necessarily mean that this will impact how you feel about this person in the long run. Because you might find someone very attractive and then physically, and then you talk to them and then you're like, mm okay then or you might not find someone extremely attractive but you try to talk to them and then eventually because their personality is so nice you end up liking them so i will say that yes we can't necessarily control who we find attractive physically but for me there is a bigger um thing at play which is there is a level of attraction but that that is impacted also by the person's personality and character so there we go and also, I think this is very underrated and it's something that I, I've talked about a lot because in the past, whenever I would ask this question to someone like, what are you looking for in a partner? And someone would be like, oh, just someone nice. I'd be like, oh my God, like, can you think a bit deeper? But now 
the irony is that this is exactly what I think, just someone nice and someone who is kind. I think kindness is so, so overlooked in our time and kindness is so important because it just keeps you grounded, first of all, and keeps you a good person. You have good values when you're kind. And also it's just the effect that it has on people around you is wonderful. And I always feel my best around people who are very kind and they inspire me to be kinder as well. So this is definitely the kind of energy that I will want because I am so sick and tired of being surrounded by people who are so self-absorbed and who are just, who don't really care about the impact of what they do on other people. And I think that is not a great trait. So here we go. Oh, can you describe the ideal man for you? Wow, a lot of you ask this question. Anything about your childhood? Okay, so I had a very interesting childhood. Mostly I was a very interesting child. I had, I was a whole mood, you know, and um, I wish I was still her. She was great. She was unimpressed by everything. I will put some photos here about what I used to look like as a kid. I was always unimpressed and unhappy in every single photo. I don't know why. Um, but um, my childhood was really good. I can't complain. Um, it was a good time. I am thinking of making a video maybe about, um, you know, just my journey throughout school and the different years in schools in Mauritius and show you photos and my little journey there because I don't think people can relate as to where I come from and what school was like in Mauritius. It was very, very different to um, private school in the UK or like, you know, other other people that went to Oxbridge basically and I will I will try to share that but yeah childhood was great I had an older sister who bullied me um in the best way possible of course she will force me to say that but um we had quite a big age gap um so when we were younger we didn't really get along mostly because I was a big fan and she was not and uh but then when we grew up we became a lot tighter and now I am the boss of her um but yeah, I think childhood was great. Um, I genuinely think I had a great childhood. The only trauma I had in childhood was by, um, you know, the Chinese dragon dance. Um, so in my uh, preschool, is that what it's called? Yeah, preschool, kindergarten or whatever. Um, after school hours, they used to come to practice the Chinese dragon dance. And I was dead scared of that, especially as soon as they would start hitting the drums. My heart will literally come out. And I was just like, oh my God, this is scary as hell. And every time my dad will come to pick me up, he'll make me run through between them and come to him. And every time I had a minor heart attack, and I'm like, here I go, this is the day I die. But he, he thought probably that he's trying to help me get over this fear but till today like 20 years later I am still really scared of that so here you go my trauma from childhood oh this is from my friend Yashna hi Yashna so Yashna is my oldest and bestest friend in the whole world um, we were in high school together in Mauritius and then we were both in London no sorry in the UK she was in Sheffield I was in Oxford then she went to Edinburgh I was in Cambridge and then now she has sadly moved back to Mauritius and I am in Dubai, but she is, oh, she's my little coconut. I call her Coco, she calls me Coco, and we just have the best friendship in the world. So she is one of the people who we don't message on a daily basis unless I need to report something or unless she needs to report something. But then we just have phone calls where we catch up about life. And it is very interesting because throughout our life, especially when um, we were at uni and stuff, our life was so similar. If something happened to me, the same thing will happen to her. To give you an example, if one of us got really ill, the other one will get really ill. Or if one of them, one of us had a major crisis, we will have the same major crisis. And it was just incredible. I think we're linked in a very weird way in life. Um, unfortunately, she has found a man and I haven't. So what's going on universe? Um, but going back to a question, what are some of the good things you are looking forward to in 2022? Mm, good question. 
Um, some of the things I'm looking forward to really is just seeing some people that I haven't seen in a very long time, including you, Yashna, we need to meet. Um, hopefully I'll come back to Mauritius or you have to come to visit. But I really want to see you and some other people that I haven't seen in a very, very long time. That's one thing I'm looking forward to, having a bit less of travel restriction. Um, hopefully I will have my graduation this year as well. So this is another thing I'm looking forward to. And also I think just coming into myself a bit, like I have moved across countries again and I'm now in Dubai. I started this new job that is very, very hard. Um, I, I'm looking forward to getting to, you know, this like calm equilibrium position where I am happy with where I am. I, I, I feel in control of my job. I feel in control of my social life. I feel in control of YouTube. And this, these are things that are slowly coming into place, but are not there yet. So I really want to get to that place and see how that feels like and being in that moment of feeling like an adult. And I'm also looking forward to having, you know, um, money. Like, <laughs> this is really funny, but um, obviously I, I come from a very privileged position. I've never really lacked money in my life, but I, it's for the first time I'm earning proper money and being able to, you know, spoil my parents or my sister or my friends and being able to travel on my own money is something that I'm really, really excited to do this year. So here we go. <laughs> you look pretty in any look, how? <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, this is funny because you know there is a running joke in my family that I do not dress well, especially from my dad. So he used to make this joke that every single person who's heard it laughs so much and is very offensive to me, is that he will say that I will walk into a shop and I will knock against a hanger and the first thing that drops on the floor is the thing that I will pick and buy, meaning that I don't have taste and I will just pick whatever is there. And this might have been true in the past, but I feel like, come on, I have taste now. Look at me in my little jumper. I feel like I dress well. But I think um, with me, I am not picky when it comes to shops and stuff. So I will just walk in every shop and I know what suits me because for a very long time, as I said, I dressed really badly, mostly because my mom was dressing me. And um, it was awful. <laughs> like I had an ugly face and um, it was just really bad dressing sense. And when I started dressing myself, it wasn't that much better either. I used to wear red trousers and like green trousers at uni. I don't know why no one stopped me, but here we are. So I've tried a lot of things and tested them. And now I know what looks good on me and what I like. So when I go into any shop, I will roam around and just have a little browse. And I know what colors I like, what styles I like. And if I find something, then I pick it up. And I usually try to avoid um, having to buy something for an occasion. So I will buy, whenever I see something I like, I buy it and I keep it. So I have a few new items in my wardrobe because I hate stress buying. If I need to buy something for, let's say a party or something this weekend, I will not find anything that I like in the shop. So that's why I don't stress buy. I buy whenever I find an item that I like and then I, I just mix and match and wear them. But thank you for appreciating. Okay, there are loads of questions about uh, when was the last time you talked to Ali? Where is Ali? Do you miss Ali? When are you doing Work Wednesday with Ali? Are you and Ali friends? Like, so many of these questions. Yes, we're still friends. Um, maybe we will do a Work Wednesday, but I don't like doing Work Wednesday remotely. I tried one with Faye and we had such a nightmare with technology. So we'll see, we'll see. But Ali is well. Um, you can go check him out on his own YouTube and Instagram page. How tall are you? I am one meter 73 centimeters. I don't know what that is in foot, but there we go. Mirror cleaning done. Yes, the cleaner came yesterday. <laughs> uh, what would you be doing if you were not working in Dubai right now? Well, I would have stayed in my previous job, which was um, a project manager at the business school in Oxford University. Um, I would still be there working. When will you tie the knot? Inshallah, mate. Make dua. How long does it take to edit your videos and how do you do it? I do not edit my videos anymore. I have an editor who I've been working with for quite a while now and who I absolutely adore. And he does an incredible job, as you can tell. And we work very well together. I've been very, very lucky. Could we have more Esteban content? Yes. 
I've informed him that he is, has been requested more. Um, so hopefully you'll see more of Esteban now. Was it easy to blend into living in Dubai for the first time compared to London? Yes, it is very easy to blend into Dubai, mostly because um, Dubai has a very big expat community. So there is literally no majority um, kind of like race or community here. Even the locals are a minority. So then everyone looks very different, but at the same time, you feel part of a community, which is very interesting, right? Because technically no one belongs, but everybody belongs because of that. So it's been really easy to kind of like get settled here. You don't feel like a stranger. You don't look different to the majority of people because there is no majority. And that has made it quite easy to blend in. And also because Dubai is all about convenience. It's so easy. Everything is easy. Getting a car, getting your groceries, getting um, your bills, all the admins, getting furniture. Everything is easy. They try to make your life as easy as possible. And any service that you want is available and you can pay for it. You can even pay for them to come into your flat, to cut your nails, to cut your hair, to give you a massage, to give you a blow dry hair. And it's all, it's all like so convenient. It's incredibly easy. So the only thing I think that can be hard here, which, is, which would apply to any country you're moving to, is to form your own social circle, right? And obviously when you're starting a new job, that's, that's the advantage of that. You're meeting new people who are also doing the same job as you. So that's quite nice. And that was my first um, exposure to people here. But also then I've done that video of how I made friends in Dubai. You, you just it's quite easy to make friends in Dubai because everyone is here on their own or they're here with a partner, but no one has like generations of family here. So everyone is looking to make friends. So that was quite easy to do. But again, when I moved to the UK, I was 18 and I moved to uni and then that's a very supported network of people and you are put into a well-structured um, kind of like life plan, right? Um, they're in charge of your housing, they're in charge of your education, they tell you where you should be at what time, uh, there's a dining hall, there's everything there. So you don't necessarily need to be independent, but here you're moving as a full grown adult, so no one is gonna feed you or anything, but there are apps here, there is delivery here, you can just order your food. And so it's a bit different. So moving to the UK was not hard in terms of um, practical stuff. For me, it was hard because I was 18, it was my first time moving away from home, and it was a completely different country, different culture, um, different climate. Uh, it was completely, it was so cold, but at least Dubai is also different to what I'm used to, but it's closer to what I'm used to. So yeah, it, it, there were similarities and differences, but I wouldn't say that um, moving to Dubai is harder. If anything, moving to Dubai is a lot easier if you're moving for a new job as an adult. How long do you see yourself working in Dubai for? I genuinely don't know. Um, the plan was uh, to give myself two years to completely experiment and see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. And then after that, make a decision about where I want to go. Um, you know, in, even in terms of, do I want to do more consulting? Do I want to do more content creation? What's going to be the split between the two? So until the two years limit that I've put on myself, I think I will be here, inshallah. Let's see how it goes. And then we will reassess after that and see. But so far, I like Dubai. Um, I definitely think it's a very good place to live. And, you know, don't pay taxes. It's sunny, it's bright, um, loads of people, loads of things to do. And as I mentioned in a video before, in Dubai, you can go to the beach, you can go to the mountain, you can go to the desert, you can go to <laughs> Burj Khalifa. Everything in one day. You have everything that you want to do. You can do shopping, you can go into a very modern city, or you can go into the forest, you can go on top of a mountain. It's just incredibly varied here. So there's nothing really that you miss. Even in terms of food, you have the world's cuisine here. You have everything that you want. So there's nothing that you miss. And I remember before coming here, I was assigned a buddy at work and we had a phone call and I told her, is there anything I need to prep before moving? And she said, there's only one thing that you will miss after you move to Dubai, which is 
the people you're leaving behind. So enjoy your time with them because everything else is better in Dubai. <laughs> and she was right. And I think this is going to be my advice from now on to anyone who's moving to Dubai. Everything else is much better here. And I think I will call it a day. Um, yeah, I think, I think that this video is already quite long. Um, but thank you for sending all of your questions. We might do this again, maybe if we hit another milestone. But um, thank you so much for all your help, all your love, for subscribing, for commenting. I try my best to like and comment as much as I can, but thank you, especially for all the love that you've shown on the video with my dad. He is over the moon. He keeps checking every day. He keeps telling me how many likes there are, how many comments there are, this new person commented. So everything that you're writing, he can see. So thank you so much for really liking that video because it was such an emotional, personal video that I put out there. And I'm so glad that it resonated so well with so many of you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. But um, yeah, thank you so much. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.